Welcome back to the channel. We are going to be continuing my Radical Self-Care for Black Women series. And today I have a special treat for you. I just want to remind you that when we are speaking about self-care, we were just talking about the five major areas, physical self-care, emotional self-care, mental self-care, social or relational self-care, and spiritual self-care. So today's guest will be addressing spiritual self-care. I want to introduce my spiritual mentor, and she is the business, Apostle Dr. Harleen Norris. She has a bachelor's degree in theology and an honorary doctorate in humanities. She is the ambassador of Hosanna Advocacy Network, an organization for abuse, trafficking, abandoned victims of violence of women and children in Nakuru, Nakuru, Kenya. She heads the Ministry of Walls of Salvation, Gates of Praise International. Her heart and compassion is to see God's people walk in their ordained purpose, kingdom, authority, and power. Let's welcome Apostle, I call her Apostle, Caroline Norris. Welcome to the channel, Apostle. Thank you so much for having me. It's a privilege and an honor. And I'm just excited. God bless everyone. I look forward to this. Thank you. So for some of you who may be wondering, what is an apostle? I know some people may have that question. And you know, this channel is about research. So I'll leave most of that up to you to go ahead and research what apostle means. But in a few words, apostle simply means one sent by God. And I'm sure you've heard the old people say in the church, some were sent, that's an apostle, and then some just went. She is one who was sent, okay? Again, welcome, Apostle. Today, we are going to talk about self-care in the Christian life. Some people may be a little confused about, well, how does self-care work with me being a Christian and being in the ministry? During our Radical Self-Care for Black Women series, I've been approaching self-care as intentional activities or rituals that support our overall well-being. So as a woman of God, what does self-care mean to you? You know, self-care has three parts into it. When I look at it from the spiritual side, I'm going to kind of stay on that side. You have your spirit, soul, and body. And so all three parts, when the three are balanced out and you're walking in the word and it gives the function of it, it aligns your body into the unity of the oneness where you're able to function spirit, soul, and body in the fullness of the purpose that God has given us because Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that. For I know the thoughts and the plans that I think for you, think towards you, says the Lord, one of good and not of evil, one of peace and a future and an expected end. Well, God has an expected end for everything that he's created us for before the foundation. So when we come together, spirit, soul, and body, we become whole, not holy, but whole, W-H-O-L-E or holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, then thus far the body can function to the perfection in which God created it to function. And so I'm just, you know, when we take care of self-care, there's a three parts. You have to take care of the spiritual aspect. Then you have your soulish or nefesh. You take care of the soulish realm. And then of course you have to take care of your physical body because what good would it be for a man to gain the world and to gain what God has, but yet he's too sick or afflicted to, to enjoy the abundance that God says that we would have. Yes, yes. And, you know, I mentioned that I told the audience that you have a ministry. What I didn't tell them is that you also travel throughout the world preaching the gospel and spreading the ministry. So as a woman who has an international global ministry, you know, how do you practice self-care? Good question. The way that I practice self-care, first and foremost, I make sure that I give my time to God, number one priority. And so, you know, he's my first in my life. So I make sure I give that time to him. And after I'm done spending time with him, a lot of times I may sit, sit still 
in his presence. And if I turn my head, it's because I have a few notes here. And a lot of times I'll sit and I sit in the presence of the Lord and quiet myself because Zechariah 2.13 tells us that to be silenced all flesh before the Lord. So first and foremost, I get somewhere and I quiet my soul so that I can be in the place where I can be in tune to listen. Because the biggest thing in this, in this place of self-care, I have to be able to hear. You have to be able to hear him in order to know because my body is his temple. He will instruct me by the Holy Spirit what's going on with my body before I'm aware of it. When you're in tune, we have to be in tune and alignment in the spirit room. It's very important. So I silence myself. And the word also says in Matthew 6, 33, to seek ye first. So when you keep him first and make him the first first in everything of your life, Everything else he'll add on throughout the day. So as I'm preparing to travel and because I've spent time in the Lord and because the foundation of my life is the word, everything else I need when I need strength, he gives me strength. I can pray and ask for the strength and I do work out. But he also lets me know what is good and what's not for my physical body. So I stay in tune spiritually to hear and then physically to know what to eat, what not to eat, to fast, to consecrate or eat more of this, come out of protein, get more protein, get more fiber. The spirit, he literally talks to me and lets me know what my body has need of and what it doesn't. So and then rest. So maybe we'll get in that a little bit, a uh, little bit later on if you want, but there's, you know, rest, there's some things that you must do. You got to know how to rest. You got to know how to be positioned and place yourself. You also have to know how to take care of yourself. And so there's a lot in there. You have to spiritually, you got to repent. There's a lot of things that tied in, but to prepare internationally, I spent a lot of times working out. I do have a, a, a personal trainer who happens to be my son, but I work out to keep my body in alignment because it's a, that's a lot of travel. And it could be a lot of wear and tear on the body. But when you're together, whole spirit, soul, and body, it's really not as hard and rigorous as it could be. And when I think back, when I wasn't in this place, it was harder because I wasn't in tune and balanced. But now that I try to stay as best as I can balance, it all falls together. Right, right. And one of the things that I'm always talking about is being in alignment and being self-aware and being aware of what things you need. I need to move some of this over here to handle this over here. So having said that, I also discussed how we cannot be helpful to others in the ministry. That's what you're doing is you're being helpful to others. If we're depleted, I use examples of not being able to pour from an empty cistern. Even Jesus would pull away from the disciples to refill his cup by communing with, with God. Can you expand on how important it is to pull away from all the busyness that we have going on in our lives, because all of us have something that we're doing, whether it's in the ministry like you are, or some people would even call going to work their public ministry or whatever they're doing. If they're an entrepreneur, if they're a student, can you explain a little bit how important it is to, to practice self-care? It's very important. That's a good point that you put there, how Jesus had to go away. After he poured out and, and, and poured himself out onto the, the, the ministry of the the gospel or doing what he was doing for the people. He would store away and a lot of he stole away to get him, keep himself in, in alignment because even though he was 100% God in the flesh, he was still a man in the, in the humanity. And so he shows us that you have to pull away in order to stay a full cistern. You have to know how to pull back so that you don't become depleted because when you pull back, when you pour out, but don't allow yourself to spend that time in with God, so that he can replenish you, refresh you, rethrive you, just get all the things out because it, it, ministry can pull when you're given a loud out. And a, a good example of that takes me back to Genesis 2, when after God did everything, just to show us how he wants us to take care of ourselves. After he made everything in the beginning, after the sixth day, the seventh day says that he rested. Yeah. He looked around and said it was tov, meaning in Hebrew is good. He rested. And we need to learn how to rest because we, in the natural, the world we have, and I'm looking at my notes, so forgive me. In the, in the natural, we live in an action-oriented world. And so there's always something to do, or it seems like there's no time to rest. But he has given us that rest and he requires us to take that rest so that it keeps us in alignment with everything else in our life because the Bible tells us the word says the scripture and I, you know who I am, I'll give scripture. He tells us in Matthew 11 and 28 through 30 that to cast all your cares upon me, take up my yoke and learn from me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light because life happens to all of us. Yes. No matter where we are, no matter what our religion preference is, life happens 
to all of us. And we're all on one equal ground. We're all in one equal universe. So therefore things are going to come. But the one thing we have to understand that the God of all creation did himself rested to show us you must take rest because in the resting of it, what happens is when we rest, not only is it right, but appropriate, but even how God rested from his work. When we do this, what it does is allow your body to rejuvenate itself, to regenerate itself because the body was made to take care of itself. That's the way that God created us. So when you take that rest, and you take the self-care, you don't become depleted because like Jesus would go away. He had to keep himself separated because yeah. he was before the masses. And yeah, so, but what he would do, he would get leave them on the shore and he would get on the boat. But it was a separation so that he would still give them what they needed, but not get depleted within himself. Because although he could get it from the father, it can be very taxing when you're pouring out like that. And they talks about deliverance when you're pouring out. It is taxing, although you're doing it in the spirit, physically, you do feel it. So self-health care is very important. God did it for a reason. Our self-care brings us in agreement with the biblical principles and gives us our rest, which keeps us at our best. And it keeps us where we can be prosperous, healthy, and strong. It restores you. And so God ordained rest. And it's very important that we take rest, especially when you're given out to so many and doing the work. Amen. And I think that that is so important for people to hear from a spiritual leader, because some churches, Christian churches, or even other religious beliefs, so many of us are running around saying we're doing this for our belief, we're doing that, and we're just hurried, and we're busy, and we're running ourselves ragged. Many of us are getting burnt out, whatever they're practicing. So I think it's so important for people to understand, look, listen, God, God, like God, he rested. He did. <laughs> he rested. Yes, and he did. So he did it as an example to us. And yes. I know for me, one of the things that was always really hard for me is being expected to run here and there mm -hmm. and do this and that. And even sometimes, you know, within, you know, some of the churches requiring people to do this and that. But then when you say you want to rest, you're made to feel guilty. And so I have just come to the point in my life where I don't feel guilty about resting. If I want to take a nap, I take a nap. I got to pull away, I pull away. So I want to thank you for that. Apostle, did you have something to add to that? Yes. I, if I could just for a second, you know, God was so, God commanded rest to the point that he gave us a day of Sabbath. Yes. And no matter what, you know, like I said, religion, you know, religion is religion. I'm not one to go into all of that, but he gave the seventh day for rest. And it's not on a Sunday where a lot of Christians and religion runs to the run to the church. It's on the sunset of that Friday sunset up until the Saturday of the sunset. He said, that's the time when you rest, where you're in with him. You're not about doing all the business, doing all the cares of the world. And it's just a time when you come into him, where you get your healing, where you get all the self-care you need mentally, emotionally, where he can, you know, take care and do the things within you before you go back out and take care of the cares of family and life and business and all those things. God knows we have all those things to do. But again, we have to always be mindful that God didn't create us to do all this work that we do and the zeal and all the things that we do. He really gave, when he says, I know the plan and purpose, he really gave the plan and the purpose. And when we really know what the plan and purpose is for our lives, no matter Right. What background you're in, whoo, self-care, well, it will give you the endurance to live the longevity and have long life that he says we're supposed to have here. And it doesn't cut our lives off prematurely because we get so busy, we get sickly. You, you yes. know what I'm saying? We, we bring sickness, high blood pressure, diabetes. We bring yes. all these things up on us because we're hustling and bustling instead of taking the time out and allowing God to do, just be in him and getting that place. It's self-care is so important because the world can run us really, really down if we're not careful. And so yeah. a lot of people are not able to enjoy their life to the fullness because of ailments out of not having that self-care. That's true. That is very true. And it's something that people don't always think about the connection. So when I'm talking about self-care and I always emphasize it's overall well-being yes not just one part it's overall well-being throughout this series i discuss realistic ways that the viewers can 
practice self-care specifically as it relates to protecting oneself from burnout, right? Because that's what you see a lot of. You see a lot of pastors burning out, a lot of preachers leaving the church because they're burnt out. And I know we're speaking from a Christian aspect, but it's all over. But God had given us a remedy for that. For example, in Exodus 18, that comes to mind for me when Jethro tells Moses and to delegate some of his responsibilities to others so that, excuse me, and I'm paraphrasing, he doesn't wear himself out. And in a prior video, I did speak about, there's a podcast that I sometimes listen to on YouTube and they have a, a blog. And one of the things that the one of the blog posts challenged Black women to do is to reframe our thinking and to understand mm -hmm. we cannot and nor should we try to do everything. Yes. And to me, Exodus 18 seems to provide a biblical foundation for practice to self-care. Is that your interpretation? If not, please share your thoughts on this scripture. And if so, what are some other examples of self-care being practiced in the Bible? Okay. Yes, it is. You know, that is very good because as leaders, we are we should have those that come up beneath us to help carry the vision and to help carry what we have, even whether it's in the church or your business or your CEO or whatever you have going. God did not call us and give us a responsibility to handle it on our own. If we look at it in the Bible, they just like an island. He never called us to be so isolated in an island where we're carrying it alone because the weight of it itself can be very taxing. So therefore, you don't have the right self-care that you have. So when he called on uh, Jethro them and called on the other elders to assist him because in that particular scripture, the responsibility was going to be so great. God never tries to give any of us anything, no matter what we're doing in life that is going to overtax us and take us over. And one good example of that as we're saying that, and you go back to Genesis, after God created everything, he did it. He created everything with the word in Genesis one. And after he did, he so everything he did was in where it needed to be. Then he formed man from the dust to tend and to keep what he did. Perfect example. To tend to what he put there. Right. And then when he got done doing that, you know, he looked and he said, hmm. And I'm paraphrasing it. It's in Genesis 1. Then he tells, he looks and he says, it's not good for man to be alone. So he gave a woman to be there for the woman. So that right there shows the presence on how God shows that he doesn't want us to do it alone because two are better than one, but it takes the responsibility not from just one or the other. Then there's something else that you were saying that I wanted to elaborate on about that is because James 1, tell, 1 5 tells us very clearly that if any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God who will give to all liberally without reproach. So we really need to ask God when we're doing things to make sure that we're not draining ourselves. God never made any of us to do anything alone. This is why he gives you, you know, the people to assist and to help to carry the whole vision or to carry what is it true that you have whether it's in your family, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in your business, he never made man to stand alone. You have man, you have spouse, you have family. You know, God was very strategic on what he did so that we don't burn out. And so we will always know how to have the self-care there first and foremost for us. And then knowing how to help with the self-care with everyone else around us. So we don't get, you know, stressed out in, in the cares of life because we really can one of the things I really resonated with and I really think is important to highlight about what you said, I mean, everything you said was very important, but in a practical sense, the things that I really, really glean from what you said is, listen, ask for help. And I know as Black women, we are taught from the time we're a child to do everything. And so, Apostle, one of the things I've been harping on on my channel is telling Black women to retire the cape, take the cape off. <laughs> you don't have to be, we don't have to be super Black woman. That's it's right. Because we are not. And it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. Which right. We, you know, our culture, we right. to think, hey, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. And it brings so much pressure on us. And to me, when you were talking, it almost make us see ourselves as God. Like we don't need help. Yeah, we do. We need help. Yes, we do. And it's no shame in asking for help. And mm -hmm. we should not be doing everything all the time because it goes back to the empty cistern. Right. Um, you have this cistern that got holes in it. And if you don't refill it, 
you know, because the holes are there. So that means the water that you put in the cistern, or, which for some people don't know what a cistern is, it's going to be like a pitcher. And the holes are the responsibilities that we have, the things that we do, the roles that we play. It's it's always pouring out. Those holes are there. So those responsibilities are there. Those roles are there. But the water keeps going out. But we have to replenish the water so that we're operating from a place of abundance as opposed to depletion. Because if we're operating from depletion, I don't care what you're doing, your ministry, your job, your business, it's all going to be lacking, right? Yeah. Because you uh -huh. are exhausted and you are not taking care of yourself. So I just wanted to, you know, add that. Yeah, that's really good. Because in essence, what you're doing, you're giving out from every area of your life, but yet you're not allowing yourself to self-care, yeah. to stay full so that you can do it. And you're right, as you know, as Black women... That's what we do. We were taught that way to wear the multi hats, wear the mini hats, but we function out of disorder because we're operating out of dysfunction according to the biblical standards. It may look like we have it all together and it's in order, but really, if we look at it from the biblical perspective, we're not in order. As black women, we need to be in order. I'm not saying you got to go out there and get a husband away, but it's your preference. We must be in the order of what God is saying so that we don't deplete ourselves. I think that that is so profound because you are right. We have to be in order. And, you know, getting back to the rest thing, when you were talking, I wanted to briefly talk, go there for a second. You know, in the Bible, it always talks about they tilled the land and then the seventh year they rested. Yes. And people need to understand that that's your life too. There are some people who talk about how you're, your life resets after seven years or what have you. I don't know how you feel about that. I'm in my seventh year. I'm 56 and I'm taking my time to re rest and rejuvenate and do what I need to do. <laughs> I'm unapologetic about it, Apostle. That's right. It highlights five main areas, physical self-care, emotional self-care, mental self-care, which some people call intellectual self-care, social self-care, or some people call it relational self-care, or in spiritual self-care or temple care. In the holistic wellness practices, I believe some refer to all areas, okay, collectively as temple care, meaning that when you go to some of these holistic medicine places, they, unlike us, in the natural, we tend to separate stuff, physical, mm -hmm. emotional, whatever, but they collectively, some of them say temple care. And so this seems to indicate that spiritual self-care encapsulates all the other care areas that I mentioned. As such, it seems to me that practicing spiritual self-care is pivotal to, to one's overall well-being. So to me as a Christian, it seems that spiritual self-care is the important care area. What is your take on that? And what are some simple ways that we can care for our spirit daily? Number one is to always seek him first, to put him first. When he's the priority of your life, then it sets the precedence to where your whole day will be in alignment. Don't wake up, hustle and bustle, be trying to brush our teeth and praying as we're going away or talking to God. Give him that first. If it's just five, 10 minutes of the morning, just give him the first of everything. I'm calling giving him the first fruit of your everything. Taking time to just sit really quickly and just inhale and exhale. Breathe in the breath and feel him. You know, it's a relationship spiritually and you want to be able to breathe in and breathe out, be in tune to not only your physical body, which is your temple, but to the one who's given you the temple. It brings you to an alignment to the anatomy of your physical and you will be able to begin to get in tune because spiritually and soul as your body talks to you and lets you know about the things that's in order and out of order. So that's one thing that I, I, I do religiously is I give myself at least five I go longer, but at least 10 to do 30 minutes or longer, just sitting. And I silence my soul. I silence everything because the Bible says he has a still small voice. So he's not loud. We don't hear him audibly like a lot of people say they do. We don't. So it's just that quietness and just positioning yourself and allowing him as you be in him. And then another way is just positioning yourself and you're in that presence. You're centering in your creator who is love. And then you'll work through these steps as you go forward. You'll have a sense of the nor in your inner man when you walk about. So I believe that when you, you know, taking time to relish, 
taking time to breathe in quietly and just appreciate that you can come to him this way in your body. There's another way we can do it is just by reviewing and just taking the time out to examine yourself to see if there's any changes where you need to do necessarily. This one, you're sitting in that presence. The spirit of God will begin to just show you these things that he wants to work with. But it also says spiritually that we're in this place, when we're in this place, that we have to make sure that as we're silencing ourselves, that we take the time. I have like little few, few pointers where you go into review, where you examine yourself possibly to see where change may be necessary for you. This is all in self-care spiritually because we have all, all are growing differently in different areas in all areas of our life where there's spirit, spirit, soul, and body, there's areas that he's always working with us in, whether it's spiritually, whether it's in your soulish. And so we want to make sure that we're just in tune in that place. Then you also, if there's anything that he may, sh that the, the spirit may show you, that God may show you, you may want to take that time out to spend time of repentance. I'm speaking from spiritual. And so you want it to change anything he wants to show that's out of order. You want to bring in change there so that you can bring yourself back into the place of the self-care because obedience, believe it or not, obedience to the word spiritually will bring your whole spirit, soul, and body into the divine health in the place to where you can prosper is because he says, I pray above all my brethren in third John two, that you would be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. He also says that this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, that you would have this, that this, you know, that you would take on the peace of God. So all of these factors come into play when you're giving him that first. And it really doesn't take that long. For me, I take longer because of what I do, but it doesn't take that long. So when you begin to make that a part of your life, you begin to move about and not necessarily have to sit so solid in it. So even sitting here, there's self-care that's going on right now, even as we're doing this. The self-care becomes a 24-hour because he's in it, so it becomes a 24 hours in your life because we live and move and have our being in him. Yes. It becomes a 24-hour self-care, self-help, self-everything. And it's, it's, it's just amazing, you all. It's amazing. It yeah. just becomes a part of your life. So the self-care is there so you don't have to like step aside and go to a gym. I, you can do something and you can... Just say, okay, okay, he'll, okay, God, I repent. It doesn't recall a pausing in your life is what basically what I'm trying to say. Yes. It becomes an active part of your life. So, yes, yes. yes. And that's one of the things that I also point out is I point out that self care is not a one and done, it's a continuous thing. And, it, you know, and the way we self care um, may change depending on the season of our lives. This area may require more attention than this area. And so I think that that's really, really good to say that, hey, it's an everyday thing. The The last thing that, I, that I'm going to bring up, and we're going to we have some time to open and just discuss other things that you want may want to discuss, is with all the things that are going on in the world, so many people are anxious and stressed. One of the main tenets of self-care is stress management. Now, for example, when I get you know anxious or stressed, I start thinking like negative thoughts sometimes. So I go there, I read or recall and think about Philippians 4 and 8. It's one of my favorite scriptures. I read it out loud and it seems to calm my mind. Philippians 4 and 8 is the one that talks about think on these things. So what other scriptures can people, you know, just one or two, um, can people think about to manage stress and support their spiritual self-care? And is there anything else you'd like to add? When we give back to him what he's given us, he'll take care of it and bring you into a place of the self-care. And then in, in regards to your what we just what you just Matthew 11, 28, 30 is one that I hold on to very dear because it's really a good one. It says, You come to me. He always tells us to come to him. You know, life is going to have its ups and downs. We're going to have trials and tests. We're going to go through losses. Things are going to happen. There's so much going on in the world right now that can bring so much stress. He tells us in Psalms 102, and I think about the third to 20th verse, 103, 20, he says that, that you send the word and he will deliver it and, it and heal from all distress and trouble. And so Matthew 11 and 28 and 30 tells us that if we come to him, all you who are labor 
and you are heavy laden, when you get laid down and weighted down with life, he says, I'll give you rest. Again, God still ordains and commands rest, no matter what is going on. He says, take of me, take of my yoke and learn from me, from my, he says, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and your burden is light. And then you gave the one about Philippians. That's one of my favorite ones as well, when it tells you to be anxious for nothing. So we have to learn how not to let the cares and the stresses and the demands of the world and family and all the things that takes place because it will put a demand on us and we can get stressful and we can get overwhelmed at time with a lot of things because life itself can bring a lot of anxiety unto us. And so it says to be anxious for nothing, Philippians 6. That's one of my favorite ones as well. To be anxious, but in everything, it says in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, to let your request be made known unto the Lord. And it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, it will guard your hearts and your minds. It says through Christ Jesus. And he also reminds me of Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, when he says to lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. So when things are going on out there in the world and things come on abruptly and unexpectedly, just pause for a minute and just remember that even though it seems like we're in charge of our lives, we're really not in control of our lives. And if we give it to the one who is, that knows exactly what we need in the like that in a minute, if we lean not into our own understanding and just pause instead of reacting, because our humanistic nature wants to respond immediately. But when we learn how to, to, pause. to pause and to be still and know that he is God, just take that, just that one quick second of just like that can move everything else out of the way. And no matter what is going to come out of what you're dealing with, you're so centered in him that it will keep you in the place that it will, whatever it is, it will not affect you the way that it will without him. So I always try to live that way because it only takes five seconds to, for everything to go all kind of ways. But if you take that moment, that one moment can be a whole movement in what you were, what you were facing. And I, I'm a stickler to that. And I pause. Yeah. And it yeah. literally changes everything. It changes what I was going to do, what I was going to say, which well, it keeps me in the place. Again, I'm responsible for how I take care of this temple. And even in the midst with everything going on, you still are responsible to know how to care for your temple, care for yourself at yeah. that given moment. Yeah. And even a lot of the psychological tools that some of these therapists use, some mm -hmm. of them to me seem to be biblically based because when you, when yeah. you say, that's kind of like when they say count to 10, stop okay. count to 10 before you move. It's so many things that we can do, like you said, to ensure that we are caring for our temple, which is what we inhabit, right? right. And so we're responsible. And the thing that I like is that even though we're responsible, we don't have to do it by ourselves. You have support right. systems that you can build. And I'm always talking about support systems. You have, and I know my audience is saying, oh, Colette, you're talking about Christianity. Well, this is what the purpose now, this particular video is, is for, and it may not be for everyone. Everyone may not get something from it, but everyone could get something from it if they listen to some of the concepts that we're discussing to help us, to empower us to be better and feel better. Did you have anything to add about self-care? I know initially you had a few things that you had prepared. Did you want to talk about a few of those things. I know we had discussed us talking about the importance of practicing self-care. We've kind of already gone through that and the biblical basis of practicing self-care. Um, we've gone through a lot of that in simple daily practices that support our spiritual self-care. But did you have anything else that you wanted to add to any area that maybe we have not discussed or you wanted to expound upon? I just wanted to just say, because we're coming from the spiritual aspect, he tells us in his word in Deuteronomy 30, 19, and I always like to give the scripture when you're speaking because this is what you should do. It's what I do do. And so we have to understand that, really understand that no matter what it is, there's been an order. There's been a ground that God has given all of creation that he created. He did it in Genesis 1. He gave the original intent for everything that he created. No matter which way you go about obtaining it or getting it or what your preference is, 
God of the universe still gave it to all of us, okay? And so he tells us that, that I've called heaven and earth as witness to you against that I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. So he gives us a choice. Everything that we do, self-care begins, first of all, with the choice. God of the universe gave all of us a choice to choose, and he's no respect of person. So we have to choose to have an active role in protecting our own well-being. And that's what all of us have to do. It's our happiness. You know, we get to choose how and what we do it and what we do. There's a lot of knowledge that is out there and available for anyone, no matter how you want to pursue it. It all just depends on what whatever your preference is. But there's a lot out there that is available, spiritual and otherwise, you know, all kind of books, and all kind of things. So we get to choose. Yes, but right. even in the choosing, it brings us back to the center core of what God of the universe created for all creation. And that is the principles, the basic principles for having self-care that we would have life and have it and abundantly and enjoy it and be prosperous and good health. I mean, so that we can enjoy all of it to the fullness. That is what he wants all of us to have, no matter what we believe and how we believe in it. I didn't know how to take care of, let's be transparent for one minute. I didn't know how to take care of my body before I came to God. I didn't. I wasn't taught that. You know, we're taught certain ways as Black women. And a lot of us, we don't have our mothers around. A lot of things happen around us, you know, in our culture with a lot of things. Mother's not there. Grandmothers take us. You have these and that. So I really, you know, we did what we did. But when I came on, I did understand, or should I say, I did not have the wisdom which brings the understanding and knowledge of the importance of having a longevity and having a long life in a healthy body. Can I say, and I quick second, can I say that I didn't understand what it was, not you know, eating this or eating that, but biblically everything is there for us on what we should and should not do and eat and etc. I committed to self-care. I came off of high blood pressure, I came off of having an issue with my sugar. I had a lot of internal things that were going on. Mm. And when I understood the basic biblical principles for living and I applied it to my life, according to my faith and believing, I can say to all of us that it literally has changed my whole, my whole physical body where I don't have the fat that I have. My A1C went from a 10 down to a four. So there's a lot of things in the biblical principles for daily living and giving myself and giving myself to look to God first, sitting and listening and learning about me through him literally has changed my whole life. I went from 232 pounds down to 170 pounds. I'm more sharper in my mindset. My oxygen in my body is improved. Overall, what I'm saying is that these here that we're talking about the, yes. and, and following these biblical principles has truly gave me a whole new life, spirit, soul, and body. Yes. I like what you said is that information is out there for you. Mm -hmm. And it goes along with one of the things that I always say is that you don't have to be ignorant. There's no excuse to be ignorant, whether what, whatever you believe, you believe whatever, whatever. you choose, mm -hmm. you decide whatever. No, we're not here to convert <laughs> folks or none of that right. stuff. I'm just sharing with you one of my gifts and my resources. Yes. This, is, this is my spiritual mentor who if I have questions I go to. So I just wanted to share this gift with you all again, you know, you all decide how you want to care for yourself. You know, I, I, you were talking about the, you know, the stress and different things, the, the blood pressure and all that. I had mentioned it on a, in a prior video, how prior to my leaving a toxic work environment, and I had done a series on that apostle, my hair was falling out. And even you had commented, you know, Hey, your hair's grown. My hair had fallen out. So a lot of people didn't realize that when it was shorter, the reason why it was shorter is because I had a, a ball cap in the middle, stress. So I had all my hair cut off to balance it out. So that it was all this, mm -hmm. yeah. So since I left that stressful job, not only has my hair grown back, but I've lost weight. My blood pressure has gone down to the point where the doctor wants to take me off of the blood pressure medicine. My sugar level numbers are down. Everything's down. And so yes. when I bring this up, it's not because I'm bragging, but it's to show that all of our humanness is connected, mm -hmm. our soul. Yes. When we say soul, we're talking about our mind and how we yes. think. 
you know, our spirit and our body, they're all connected. You know? So this is not a fake thing. This is a real thing. And so that's why I brought this series because I said, you know what, as black women, we need to understand that these things are connected because we hear them in three different areas or five different areas, whatever, but they really are connected. When yes. one thing is off alignment, it can pull on another area, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's so important, like you said, you know, it's our job, it's our responsibilities to care for ourselves, you know, and that does not mean that we're perfect in every area. I'm still working on areas of my life, you know, particularly my health. And so when I do these videos, it's not that I know it all. I'm on a journey. So you're invited to journey with me and the folks that I bring on. And we're all di at different areas in our yeah. journey. And we all have different journeys. We don't all have the same journey. I don't believe that I never have. We all have different journeys. We all at different areas in our journey. So I want to thank Apostle for being here and sharing her wisdom with myself. I always learn. I The only thing I regret about doing the interview with her is I can't take notes because <laughs> whenever I listen to her, I'm going to listen to the replay. I take tons of notes. And so I really, really, really thank you for blessing us. I know that you're going to be doing some traveling soon. So yes. just share, um, first of all, before we get there, did you want to share anything else? And then let's talk a little bit. We only have a few minutes about some of your upcoming uh, travels that you have going on in, for, for your ministry. Yes. You know, I just want to just leave all of the viewers and myself and you as well with just this little simple scripture, Matthew 7, 7. And he just says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. So what is that saying that the God of our universe, there's nothing that he will give us if we ask, seek, and knock. It's all right there. Everything that he created, he definitely said again, I'm going to take it back because I have to. He created, and I say this because I didn't come, you know, from churches. I stopped living in the middle of my life at the age of 30. I gave myself to the Lord and you know, I'm not 30 anymore. You know, women don't tell the age. You know, black women don't tell the age. But right. <laughs> I'm just seasoned and matured, you all. No, but, you know, no, I don't have a problem with it. I'll be 62 in November. And so you know, I don't feel it at all. But we need to just keep that and just ask. We all have this one equal plane, and that is God. However you serve, however you seek him and serve him, whatever you do, just ask. And so I do that all the time. I ask. I had to learn that that was the hardest thing that I wouldn't have. We, we talked about it earlier as black women. We don't like to ask nobody. We just don't. We were brought up to be strong, independent, carried away. You know, it is what it is. That's how our culture were. You know, pack the babies on your back, carry the weight, do it all. But women of God, we don't have to. Women, we don't have to do that anymore. We can ask. That was where I found my my freedom and my my deliverance and a lot of things of my life because I didn't ask. I always thought that I had to carry it all. And then it was not taboo, but you know, you weak if you go ask for help and That's you know, right. all the things that we would get and we watched our mothers and our grandmothers, we watched them and nothing wrong with that. We had some strong black women, Yes, yes. but we were out of order. So I just want to leave that with us. Ask. Just ask. Just ask. That's right. And you go receive. Right. I learned to ask, and not, now I don't know how not to ask. So, That's right. ask. That's right. okay. so with that being said, yes, I am getting ready to go back out internationally. Uh, I leave here in less than a week. We're getting ready to go out to Nakuru, Kenya. There, I'm a CEO and founder of Hokan. It's a, a place that we build and establish for women that are very battered and abused and the children, human trafficking. It's, it's, it's a lot. We have taken on some horrific cases. We actually go into the courts and we actually get awarded some of the, you know, the children because how bad it is. So I'm totally carrying that whole responsibility of the housing, the security, the food, the schools. We take them on. And of course, all the funds come from here and it comes from what we do here. A lot of it I carry myself, but that was a baby that God has birthed over in Nakuru, Kenya. This is what I would like to do in the States. And I'm still asking God, why did you birth it over there first? He birthed it internationally for a reason. 
that doesn't happen a lot. You know, that's that's just odd because internationally, but that's what we're doing. So we'll be leaving there. And when we come back from there, I'm planning on going over there. I'm going to meet with some government officials there and some dignitaries there about doing some even greater work over in there. Yeah. So and then I also have a, you know, I have like seven pastors over there who are under me. So I'm going to meet up with them so I can get an update of what's going on in the churches and in the ministry and with the people, because I'm very, my heart and my compassion is just for God's people. And Africa stole my heart over 15 years ago. That's it, just have my heart. And so when I come back from there, I'm going to be going over to Israel. So I got a real hectic schedule. I'll be there doing some a speaking engagement, but also some touring with my pastor and with a, a group of people. And then when I get back, I'm going to rest for about another five days and try to get some ministry time down here with the people here. And then I'm off to Montego, Jamaica, because I have a speaking engagement there. So that's what's going on. And then next year is already starting to get booked. I have India on the radar. New York is already on the radar for 2023. So I'm very busy. So as an apostle, that's what I do. I am sent to build, to plant, and to get into build churches and to build the people and to build the leaders. And that's what I do. You know, we're in the process of building a third home for one of the pastors over there. So we're pretty busy. So that's kind of what's going on. Yeah, we're busy. But what I want the viewers to, to hear you, you said you did say rest in there. So that's <laughs> so that's important. So if people wanted to follow you, did you want to share any of your you have a channel or, or, or Instagram or anything like that? Yes, I have Facebook. It's under Dr. Haroline Norris for Facebook. And I'll put that in. I'll put all her information in the description box. Okay, thank you. I also have an Instagram, and I believe it's under the same name. It's under just Haroline Norris. Also on YouTube, you can go to the initials WOS, GOP Ministries. There's messages and things on there. I don't do sermons, but messages. I don't have my website up right now because we're revamping the whole ministry. Cool. Yeah, that, that's a whole other baby that's in the mix, but we are literally are revamping the whole website. So I don't have that information to give you now because we have it down and it's in the process of being redone. Prayerfully, it'll be done by the time I come back from all of this travel so we can get it back going. But that's how I can be reached right now. Well, I want to thank Apostle for being here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody you think may benefit from this video. We will be continuing our Radical Self-Care for Black Women series. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you would like to get notified when I upload new videos. Remember to hit the notification bell and give a comment, okay? Give a comment. And until we meet again, we'll talk. Thank you for watching.